Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here with StringTheory.com, back with the fourth installment of our semi-daily Q&A. And the question today is, if specificity is very important for building strength, for um, mastering the motor skills of the specific movements that you're using to test strength, why use exercise variations in the first place? So in the context of powerlifting, if you're trying to get your squat, bench, deadlift up, uh, why would you ever do anything other than just the competition variants of squat, bench, and deadlift? You know, why would you do front squats, close grip bench, uh, deadlift with the opposite stance, block pulls, etc.? Um, and it comes down to two basic reasons. The first uh, has to do with motor learning. There's a theory in just learning in general that um, a lot of how we learn isn't just from repetition, but is from error identification and correction. And so uh, as you practice a movement, you get really good with it, and it's easy to kind of go on autopilot. Um, it's, it's easy to, to tune out a little bit as you're doing it, so you're, you're a little bit less engaged. Um, or just you get really, really strong, uh, and the, the weights for the competition variant become very, very challenging, and you're more just kind of focused on getting the weight up than the actual execution of the lift and mastering it. Uh, and so when you introduce exercise variations, there's there are movements that uh, you're a little bit less familiar with. So um, errors in execution are going to be uh, much, much more obvious, much, much more noticeable. Um, so you get more opportunities for um, identifying errors and correcting them with very similar movements that are then going to transfer to the main lifts. So uh, say in the case of the squat, um, you know, if you're a low bar squatter in competition, front squat, a high bar squat, a pause squat, those are all still training the general motor skill of the squat. But by introducing those variations, you're going to um, kind of throw yourself into waters that are a little bit less comfortable. Um, so you're going to make more errors, be able to identify more errors, and master that general motor skill of squatting that you'll be able to then transfer over to your low bar squatting competition. Um, you, you see this in a lot of motor learning research in general as well. Uh, if you want, you can just run a quick search for constant versus varied practice um, in almost any motor skill, um, the vast, vast majority of the time, varied practice beats out constant practice. And, and this is kind of the theory behind it, that if you're doing the exact same thing all the time, um, you just don't have as many opportunities to identify and correct errors. Now, if you're training with a coach, uh, I think it is a lot easier um, to maybe make your training a little bit more vanilla and that be very successful. Uh, you see this with, say, Boris Shako's lifters. They pretty much only stick to um, squat and bench. They do have some more variation in their deadlift training. But if you have a coach watching you and you know pointing out things that you can improve with each rep, um, even if you do kind of have that natural inclination to just sort of go on autopilot with movements that you've done a lot that you're very, very comfortable with, um, under a coach's watchful eye, that's going to help with error identification and correction, you know, giving you things to watch out for on the next set, next workout, etc. Um, so I don't, I certainly don't think that exercise variation is necessary, but I do think that that is uh, one of the biggest benefits um, for most people, including it in their program. Uh, it's just going to you know, give you something you're not quite as accustomed to to help you better master the general motor skills of squatting, benching, deadlifting. Uh, so that's number two, or that's number one. Uh, number two is that uh, just by including some slight variation, that's probably going to help uh, reduce your risk of overuse injuries. Now, I'm not going to pretend like there's research to support this, but um, again, in general, if you look at pretty much any other sport in existence, um, the the more you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over, the higher your risk of overuse injuries is. Um, so for example, just by analogy, uh, runners tend to have a much, much higher uh, injury risk than triathletes do because all they're doing for the most part is running. And so a lot of running coaches recommend cross-training to their runners when they're not in competitive season um, just to cut down on that risk of overuse injury 
Whereas, you know, triathletes, they're biking, swimming, running all the time. So they're, they do have a little bit more variety there. So they tend to have lower rates of overuse injury. Um, just for myself and in people I've coached and just observing athletes in the gym, I do, I do tend to find um, that people who do have a little bit more variety in their training, um, their, their results may not be quite as good in the short term because they aren't getting that highly, highly specific practice. Um, and that, that would especially be true for maybe newer lifters or intermediate lifters. Um, but I do find that they end up not having to take as much time off with overuse injuries, whereas people who use really high volumes of just a very small um, array of exercises, a lot of them uh, do tend to struggle more with overuse injuries. That's just uh, an observation I've made. So uh, to answer this question, summing up the video again, um, two biggest benefits of including some more variation is one, the general motor learning benefits of um, giving you more opportunities, more abilities to uh, identify and correct errors in technique that may not be quite as obvious if you're just sticking with uh, a smaller set of movements. And the other is that I do think it's going to be beneficial for uh, helping you uh, reduce your risk of overuse injuries so you can stay in the gym and keep training hard. Okay, so that is the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe, and uh, if you have questions you want answered, ask them in the comments below, and if I like your question, I will pick it and answer it in our video tomorrow. All right, guys, till next time.